<laughs> Greetings, it's Lucas from Bardscraft. Today I want to try out a few simple ways to make cheap flocking for your tabletop terrain. Follow along and I'll show you the secrets of dill, oregano and black pepper. Okay, I need something to put the flocking on. I began by cutting out my sample pieces from XPS foam. This will be roundish in shape. I will make the stone textures real quick, while you enjoy the cutting noises. You're welcome. And by the way, if you enjoy the content and you're new here, do subscribe. Thank you. The aluminum foil is the final step for the stone textures. After this, we can apply some paint and then move on to the flocking. Alright, I made stone textures for all of the pieces. Now you can see, as I start painting like a brute, directly from the bottle cap. Okay, so I base painted all of the stone areas with black. I don't know about you, but I don't mind getting messy fingers while painting. As you can clearly see in almost all of my videos. Usually, I just apply a darker layer of paint under my flocking. What works best for me is a mixture of green, brown and a bit of black. The dark and earthy green will do just fine. Here you can see that some of the paint from the rocky areas got mixed in, but that's alright, we get some good variation. Instead of calling myself a noob, I call this experimental wet blending. Okay, that was a crude paint job. I'm in a hurry for a D&D &D session. Wish me luck. I'm back. We suffered a terrible defeat, but nobody died. Back to the crafting table, I proceeded by doing my favorite paint job for simple stone surfaces, a layer of brown, sort of like a sloppy dry brushing. Then with a bit of grey on the brush, I dry brushed the outer parts of the textures. And finally, another dry brushed layer with a tan, so a really light grey. The rock texture worked pretty well this time, now I can add some flocking on top. The flocking we use will be attached with PVA glue. I added a few drops of water to make it easier to apply. I'll start with the dill. Alright, sprinkle on as much as you want to, and then you can use your fingers to tap down some of the flock. Next comes the oregano and the pepper. The oregano might look a bit like a layer of fallen leaves, let's see. Moving on, the black pepper won't be used as green flocking, instead it will work as pretty impressive sand. I covered about half of the third sample piece with dill to begin with. I planned that this piece will simulate the transition from grass to dirt road. Once that's done, I applied the black pepper on the rest of the surface. And make sure to use black pepper of mixed grain size. This looks surprisingly good. At least it smells good. This looks surprisingly good. The black pepper will certainly prove useful in some of my upcoming terrain projects. Wait for the glue to dry, then add more PVA glue on the flocking. A more diluted mixture will spread out easier over the herbs and spices. Hopefully no flock will fall off once dried. Oh no, the glue is still contaminated. I made a new dilution for covering the oregano. Later, I noticed this is too much glue. But hey, we learn along the way. Oops, almost got glue all over the table. Moving on. When covering the pepper, you might encounter surface tension related issues. Ignore it and add on more glue. That usually works for everything in life. Alright, it's moment of truth and I'm not wearing pants. The glue has dried and these are now ready to be dry brushed. A quick dry brush with yellow is all you need for making the dill look great. Perhaps something more can be done, of course. After this I dry brushed the sand or dirt made from pepper using a tan color. The occasional larger grains of pepper are what makes this look so good. That piece is almost done, but let's move to the oregano. A green and yellow mixture is good for dry brushing the oregano terrain.
I think this passes as fallen leaves. We just need to add some more colors. So I dry brushed a few spots with red. Then mixed an orange from these paints and applied it on some of the leaves. And also dry brushed some smaller parts of the surface. The orange is also good for the black pepper sand. I dry brushed the sand with this orange and it seemed to work just great. You know what? I think I learned some useful things today. I feel more confident in taking on larger terrain projects that require good flocking. What I like the most is the pepper. I never thought it would be that simple. The transition from grass to sand looks really good and required no extra work. I didn't even think about it while painting. So go ahead, add pepper to a poor man's crafty arsenal. Moving on to the dill. With only the earthy green undercoat, dill and yellow dry brush, this is mildly impressive. Good to use as standard grass. However, it doesn't smell as nice as the oregano. This looks okay. Perhaps not the best alternative. I will use the oregano method for creating smaller patches of fallen leaves on the ground. And by using different colors, these work well as overgrowth on ruins. As you can see in the epic fantasy ruins episode from last week. Hey, flocking ain't that expensive and it can smell really good. If you have any witty remarks, do tell me in the comments to let me know. Subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, check out some of these crafts for more simple terrain ideas and custom-made miniatures. Good luck!